Hi, I'm Yang, and I'll be talking about some work on more efficient algorithms for growth approximation in directed graphs. This is joint work with Shiri Chechik, Omar Rodam, and Aaron Sidford. To start, I'll be giving some background and introductory definitions. Then I'll set our main results. And in the second half of the talk, I'll um, go into the algorithms that allow us to achieve our main results um, for more efficient growth approximation in directed graphs. So the setting we'll be working in um, within this talk is a directed graph with n vertices, m edges, and every edge has a positive length. The girth of a graph um, is defined to be the minimum length cycle in the graph. And in this graph, the girth is four, um, as given by the cycle shown. It's very natural to want um, algorithms for computing uh, the natural quantity of the girth. Unfortunately, work of Williams and Williams has shown that any subcubic time algorithm um, to compute the girth exactly actually implies that you can compute APSP, all pure shortest path, exactly in subcubic time, which is conjectured to be impossible or is uh, a popular hardness assumption. In this sense, um, there's been a focus on getting multiplicative growth approximation algorithms instead. To start talking about these algorithms, um, for girth approximation, we'll start on the case of undirected graphs where much more is known, such as a 2k minus one multiplicative growth approximation in time m n to the one over k. Algorithms um, for growth approximation often go through the concept of a spanner, where a C spanner for a graph G will define as a subgraph H of G with the same edge lengths. Um, um, that approximates the distance up to a factor of c. Because h is a subgraph and has the same edge lengths, the distance lower bound is clear. So it just has to make sure that it does not distort any distance in g by more than a factor of c. So um, in this graph, you can remove some edges and get a two-spanner zoo, um, this is an example. Additionally, it's known that every graph has a 2k minus 1 spanner with n to the 1 plus 1 over k edges, which can be constructed in time m n to the 1 over k. Additionally, this is conjectured to be tight. Notice that these two results um, share a striking similarity. That's because the algorithms to give you 2k minus 1 spanners in time m n to the 1 over k often just directly translate to growth approximation algorithms with the same guarantees or a 2k minus one multiplicative guarantee. I should remark that the best growth approximation algorithms in undirected graphs um, don't uh, directly use spanners. Now let's talk about directed graphs. It's natural to wonder, do the techniques from the um, undirected graphs translate at all? To start, we're gonna ask, do directed graphs actually have spanners? And the answer is actually no, not in the sense described on the previous slide. The main issue um, can be seen through this example, where you just have n over two vertices on the left and n over two on the right. Um, and there's all edges between the left to the right. So there's n squared over four directed edges, but there's clearly no spanner. Deleting any edge would change its distance from one to infinity. The main issue is that the distance metric in directed graphs isn't symmetric. And this example exploits that. So how do we get around this issue? Well, we can define the round trip metric. Um, so the round trip distance between two vertices u and v in a directed graph is the shortest, uh, well, is the sum of distances from u to v and back from v to u. Additionally, we can define a round trip spanner analogously as a subgraph h that maintains all round trip distances up to a factor of c. It's known that 2k minus 1 round trip spanners exist with um, n to the 1 plus 1 over k edges up to extra factors of k and um, logarithmic in n and the maximum weight. Unfortunately, no efficient algorithms are known because 
the algorithms require computing the full round trip metric, unfortunately. Given this, um, now let me talk about what the algorithms for growth approximation in both undirect and indirect graphs, like what's known. So as discussed earlier, um, you can get a 2k minus 1 um, growth approximation in mn to the 1 over k time in undirected graphs. So basically this is, I can get a constant approximation in time arbitrarily close to linear. Additionally, you can get a 3 halves approximation in some quadratic time. In directed graphs, actually, beyond the trivial algorithm that just runs Dijkstra from every vertex, which runs in time mn, the only result that's known is a result of um, PRSTV that gives a k log n approximation in time mn to the 1 over k. So this is a log n factor worse than the approximation known for undirected graphs in the same runtime. So this is actually not a constant approximation because of the logarithmic dependence on n. So it's natural to ask, can we actually get a constant factor um, growth approximation algorithm for directed graphs in time better than mn, or is the log dependence necessary? Our main results is that you can actually do this. Um, you can get a three approximation for the growth in a directed graph in time m root n. Additionally, you can get a k log k approximation in time m n to the 1 over k. So the latter result um, shows that I can actually get a constant approximation for the growth of directed graphs in time arbitrarily close to linear, very much like the situation in undirected graphs. So yeah, so to reiterate, first we get a constant factor growth approximation in subquadratic time m root n, and in fact, we can get the exponent arbitrarily close to one. So we see this as kind of a larger um, piece in a puzzle where you can ask, are directed graph problems like necessarily much harder than the corresponding undirected graph problems? And in a lot of cases, the answer is either no, or it seems like there's at least significant progress being made. Um, we're studying growth approximation. Additionally, there's directed analogs for the undirected Laplacian solvers. Additionally, for things like BFS and, sh and approximate shortest paths, which are very efficient in parallel in undirected graphs, you can ask whether you can get analogs in directed graphs. And obviously, the um, approximate algorithms for maximum flow in undirected versus directed graphs. Cool. So, um, at this point, I'll start going into um, the algorithms that help us get our results. So let's go. A lot of the algorithms for growth approximation in undirected graphs and spanners are focused around the idea of ball growing. And our algorithms will also use the concept of ball growing. Um, to illustrate it, I'll give an algorithm that gets 2k minus 1 spanners with n to the 1 plus 1 over k edges in an unweighted graph, undirected also. And we'll see how it works. The high level idea behind ball growing is you're going to pick a vertex v and either grow a BFS or shortest path tree around the vertex. Additionally, we don't actually want to grow the ball all the way. So we're going to cut at some point when um, the ball growing has already done a lot of work relative to like some progress we've made. So this is the cutting condition, when you terminate the ball growing around the vertex V and remove vertices. Precisely, the cutting condition we'll use in our algorithm is um, well, the undirected growth approximation algorithms, is you're going to pick any vertex V, and we're going to define the balls around V, BVD, to be vertices U within distance D of V. So these balls are growing around V as D increases. Our algorithm is pick V, we're going to grow balls, um, until the size of the d plus first ball is the most n to the 1 over k times the size of the d ball. And then we're going to add a spanning tree on um, the ball b, v, d plus 1, and we're going to delete all vertices in b, v, d. So let's try to understand why this works. Let's consider the following graph to see an illustration. We're going to start at that vertex. We're visiting it. Now we're going to visit its neighbors. Well, the, there's still many edges out of it, so we're going to grow to there. Let's look, at the, the, yeah, let's look at the next level. There's still many edges out, so we're going to grow to there. And now that cut is sparse. There's only one edge out versus the size of the ball. 
So we're going to add a spanning tree on that, and then we're going to try to delete the inner vertices. Or like not consider them for, for the rest of the algorithm. So how do we analyze this? Let's first show it's a 2k minus 1 spanner. Well, the high level idea behind showing that is that um, this condition that the d plus first ball is at most n times whatever k uh, times the dth ball in vertices will, um, will uh, hold for some d at most k. So in that case, we'll um, take that ball and we'll be done. And that's just because the size cannot uh, increase by more than n to the 1 over k k times because it's only n vertices. So how do we show there's the most n to the 1 over k edges, n, n to the 1 plus 1 over k edges? Well, um, we're going to charge n to the 1 over k edges per vertex deleted, and that's because of the cutting condition. And that completes the proof. Now, um, it turns out that like, these spanner algorithms or these um, ball growing algorithms don't actually translate super easily to directed graphs. The basic issue is that you can't actually grow balls in a round trip metric, um, which, is, which would be the analog. That's, that's kind of like, it's circular in some sense. So kind of the obvious fix is why don't you just grow balls um, instead of um, in the round trip metric, just grow them outwards and grow them inwards kind of at the same time and use that somehow. So we'll define an out ball BVR to be all vertices U within distance R of V. So the distance from V to U is the most R. And an in ball is defined analogously. So the most the main issue is that actually spanning trees on the out ball don't give distance information. It only gives one directional. So somehow like reasoning about the out ball won't give us the girth information we need. The high level idea behind getting around that, which um, is the basic idea behind our first algorithm, is that you should actually recurse on the out ball instead of just adding a spanning tree. Um, and that's actually where our results are slightly worse than in the undirected case. So let's start with our first algorithm um, for ball growing in directed graphs. Let's say that our goal is we're trying to decide does the graph of a cycle of length at most r as a decision problem. So uh, we're just going to pick a vertex B and grow the out balls um, R, 2R, all the way to DR. The key observation is that if the ball V, D plus 1R, has no cycles of length R, then actually no vertices in B, V, D, R can be involved in cycles of length R. Because if it were, then um, the ball at distance D plus 1 times R would contain that cycle. So we're actually going to do the following recursion. We're going to recurse on the ball B, V, D plus 1, R, and the extra vertices V minus B, V, D, R. So these balls are actually overlapping in the middle. Um, we see this as like the new um, insight in this algorithm that it's actually possible to recurse on overlapping pieces in this sort of recursive algorithm. So you can actually make the algorithm run efficiently as long as the overlap is small. And if you pick D to ensure the overlap is small, you naively get a K log and approximation algorithm, which actually simplifies the analysis of um, PRSTV while getting the same results. The second observation, which gives us our first improvement, is that when the ball BVDR is small, then you can actually allow for a much larger boundary. Because when the ball we're cutting out is small, then the recursion on that piece terminates very quickly. So this allows for more refined cutting condition depending on the size of the smaller ball. Doing this carefully actually gives a deterministic k log log n approximation algorithm for the girth in directed graphs in time m n to the 1 over k up to logarithm factors. So this is already an improvement. And it's deterministic, unlike the previous randomized algorithms of um, PRSTV. Cool. So, uh, now I'm going to talk about our algorithm that gets a three approximation in time m root n. So the key observation behind this algorithm is that if a vertex u's in a cycle of length r with v, then the distance um, from v to u has to be at most r. And for all w, where the distance from v to w is at most r, we actually have the distance from u to w is at most 2r. Um, so also, if there's very few vertices within distance R of V, then you can actually just check the whole ball by ball growing. 
These are the two observations that are going to outline our algorithm. At a high level, the first observation allows us to test whether a vertex is potentially in a short cycle with V. And we're going to use that to restrict the set of vertices we need to search on and then just run ball growing. So how does the algorithm actually work? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to pick m sets of size um, root n, s1 to sm. These kind of are like our testing sets. And um, we're just going to run Dijkstra from each of them to get all our shortest path distances from and to them. Now we're going to store a set for each i between 1 and m, um, where the set ti of v is intuitively all vertices of the algorithm still things could potentially be in a short cycle. The way we're going to do that is we're going to test, well, is it true that for all vertices in SI that are close to V, um, that the distance, um, well, that are close to V, the, then the distance from S to T for any vertex T that's also close to V is the most 2R. So it's just the condition on the previous slide. If the distance from V to S is the most R, then the distance from S to any other vertex T that's close to V had better be the most 2R if V and S are in a short cycle. And you can test this efficiently with our, uh, because we ran Dijkstra from each S. And finally, we sparsify the set TI at the end. We just get a random sample, so it kind of like maintains all the information we need with high probability. So once again, intuitively, TI of V is the set of SI that the algorithm still thinks can be in a cycle of length R with V. Like the set's going to slowly reduce because we're adding more and more tests as we increase the parameter I. Finally, we'll set m to be polylog, and that's going to be enough. Um, also, at the end, if t of m, the size is 100 log n, then we're just going to ball grow from v. In this case, we'll be able to guarantee that we only need to check polylog times root n vertices. To analyze this procedure, um, the dijkstra's take m root n time. And kind of the key um, technical lemma is that if um, the size of ti, the vertices um, that, um, I, that like the algorithm things can potentially be in a cycle of length r, doesn't go down by a constant fraction, then we'll recover a cycle of length 4r via a different simple procedure. So also, we need to show that if tr, ti is size o of log n, then the ball growing only takes um, o tilde root n time. And that's because ti was like a random sample of vertices of size root n. So it like, up to a factor of root n approximates the true number of vertices in the ball. So in total, it takes m root n time up to logs, and this gives a four approximation. You can get a three approximation by being a little more careful. So now let me talk about our k log k approximation algorithm. Interestingly, these algorithms, the first one and the second one, do completely different things. The first one does some just simple recursion procedure, and the second one does some involved sampling. And kind of as a result, we show that we can combine both of them at the same time, get a k log k approximation. At a high level, we're going to first sample n to the one over k vertices and just run Dijkstra from them. And then kind of use the procedure of algorithm two to reduce the number of important vertices to check to potentially be in a cycle down to size n to the one minus one over k. The k equals two case uh, uh, corresponds to a three approximation algorithm in this situation. Well, then we show that this like accelerated ball growing procedure of algorithm one plus the recursion on boundaries actually only takes k log k levels instead of k log log n levels in the case that um, there's only n to the one minus one over k important vertices to check for every vertex v. So that's where the k log k approximation um, comes from. And that's our algorithm. It runs the time m n to the one over k. It's a k log k approximation. So um, that was at a high level an overview of um, the algorithms that help us achieve our results. So finally, let me just talk about some potential future directions. The main open problem is, can you actually get a 2k growth approximation in time, mn to the 1 over k? Um, so um, a potential approach to this that I think is very interesting, at least to get an O of k approximation, say, is can we prove or disprove the following statement? In a directed graph G that has m edges and no cycles of length log n over epsilon, can we remove 
epsilon m edges and have a DAG result at the end. So um, after the paper was written, the authors uh, noticed that the reductive result of CMOR basically using similar ideas to the first algorithm, the accelerated ball growing that got a K log log n approximation that shows that the, um, the above statement is true with um, epsilon might to the minus one log n log log n. So basically if a graph G with M edges has no size of length log n log log n over epsilon, then you can remove epsilon M edges and have a DAG. And the ideas are very similar to the ideas of algorithm one. Additionally, um, I think resolving this problem, in addition to potentially giving us a O of K growth approximation algorithm in time MN to the one over K, potentially applications in like approximate algorithms for minimum feedback arc set, other property testing, et cetera. Finally, there was some recent work showing that our algorithms can be extended to two plus epsilon approximations, also in subquadratic time. And also um, this work of uh, um, DW20, shows that you can improve the constants in our O of K log K approximation significantly, such as getting a four approximation in time M N to the 0.414. So um, faster than M root N, which is our three approximations and et cetera. But asymptotically it's still K log K. So um, it would still be very interesting to see whether you can get O of K maybe via the problems or techniques um, that are, I'm asking above. So yeah, um, that's my talk. And if there's any questions, I would be happy to receive emails or I'll um, receive questions at the session later.